Hello bakers and welcome to Upside Down. In today's tutorial, we are going to start importing all of our assets, set up everything and prepare our scene. Everything is going to happen in Unreal Engine 5 and later in the next video, we are already going to start setting up our materials. Now, without further ado, let's roll the intro. In this part, we are going to start exporting our assets for Unreal. In the same way that I started uh, modeling uh, the bath and the other elements in the scene, I used to create uh, the windows as well the doors and also uh, a sink and a toilet and few other small assets that were for the scene. Uh, everything is modeled pretty much the same way. Uh, I used just a blueprint that uh, I had from either the web page of the producer that uh, is uh, creating this sort of a bath or this sort of an equipment. And after that, just uh, creating it from uh, base shapes. So when it comes to exporting your assets for Unreal, there are a few things that uh, you need to consider before uh, actually exporting them. And the main thing is about the location of from where you're exporting them, because uh, the center of your scene from your 3D software of choice, in my case 3ds Max, this is going to be where the pivot point inside Unreal is. For uh, the walls as well for like the tiles and uh, floor tiles and, and everything, uh, I'm going to export it uh, as it is from the scene because anyway I started modeling everything pretty much in the center and those are elements that uh, I'm not expecting to change since uh, we already have set it a space but if you're doing uh, something which is not a set project with uh, exact measurements uh, and it's something that you might need to change for future it would be wiser to split this into different modules and export it like this because in that case you will be able to move them around inside Unreal. So let's start by exporting. Uh, and just before that, I'm uh, going to tell you about the second thing. So for example, the bathtub is something that I would like to move around in the scene and maybe experiment a little bit with the position. So this is an asset which I'm going to put the pivot point in the center and then move it to the correct position in the scene so that I have the pivot point in the center but as well on the bottom of it so that we can move it easier to where we want. Let's do that one actually first and after that we are going to go for the walls. So I'm going to uh, make the pivot point when I have the butt selected to be in the center. We already have the bottom of the bathtub uh, on zero. So I'm just going to move it on the other two axes. So on Y and on X like this. And then I'm going to go File, Export, Export Selected, because we don't want to export absolutely everything else that is in the scene. So as you can see, I already uh, exported uh, a lot of the items. And now I'm going to select and export this one. And once we put the name and everything, uh, this export window will appear. And we're exporting everything into an FBX. You can also export it in an OBJ, but FBX is a uh, mostly common use uh, format for getting everything inside Unreal. So here, there are a few things that uh, are important for us. First one is to have the smoothing groups enabled. So this way, all the smoothing groups that we have set up inside 3ds Max are going to be transferred to Unreal. And the other one is to go all the way down. This is under advanced options and it's for the unit scale. You can leave it on automatic if you know that already you set it the scene and everything uh, to be in centimeters and the scale is correct. But if you are not sure, it's uh, better to just remove it and put it on centimeters so that you know that the scale and everything is correct. I'm going to leave it on automatic because I know when I was starting the project, I set the unit scales into centimeters, so everything should be correct. And I'm just going to click OK. So this asset is uh, exported. Now we can hide it and I can start doing exactly the same thing for the other elements. We're just going to select it and for the walls, tiles and floor elements, as well for the ceiling, I'm just going to export them directly from the position that they are at the moment. Now we are ready to get 
everything set it and start our project inside Unreal. So first thing is that we need to actually create a project. Once you download it and started the Unreal Engine from the Unreal Editor and you click launch, you will be presented with the following screen where you can open either recent projects, create some of the game templates that they have, film templates, architecture and automotive as well. Since we are doing an architectural visualization, I would go with the architectural templates. Uh, you can see that there are a couple of them that are already set up for different purposes. And the reason why it's uh, good to use some of the templates, unless you would like a completely blank project, is that it just has some of the extra functionality or some already prepared packages that can help you out. In our case, we are not uh, going to use uh, a lot of the preset uh, features, but anyway, we are going to use the architectural template so we can see that uh, we will have the whole setup and in the middle over here you can see that there is a compass which is an important part when you're doing architectural visualization. If you would like to make a fill of the interior that is correct so that you have the correct orientation to uh, where exactly this apartment is looking at. So we are going to use this one but I'm going to use the blank template which doesn't come with any of the other features. We are going to just select it and over here we are going to name the project uh, the way that we want. In my case, I'm just going to name it Bath and going to click Create. Once we have Unreal loaded and set it up, uh, let's go first through some of the basics and in case that uh, you never worked with Unreal. And I'll talk a little bit uh, about some of the new things that came uh, together with Unreal 5. So first thing that uh, I mentioned is that uh, this is the architectural template and as you can see we have this compass here in the middle so this way we can uh, set up everything that uh, we have the correct windows on the correct side and just it's something that I know that for architectural visualizations sometimes it's uh, quite important to have the correct setup especially if you need to create a project that will be after that executed in real life sometimes it's quite important so we have this with the architectural template. Uh, but let's uh, go quickly through uh, Unreal and the first steps inside Unreal. So we have our viewport, which is the place where we are going to place and interact with uh, all the actors that are in the scene. And as well, we have on the side, the outliner. The outliner is kind of a supporting feature with the viewport. So if we select something, it will highlight it on the outliner, but as well, we can search for different assets or items in the outliner, either by selecting them or just by typing into the search bar, or as well, we can arrange them by type or by uh, item label. Another thing that we can do either from the outliner or as well from the viewport is once we selected an item, we can either right click and after that go to visibility and hide selected, or as well, we can use H on the keyboard for shortcut to hide it. Or also we can go into our outliner bar and click the little eye icon on the side that will either hide it or unhide it after that. Next panel, which is uh, also important one is the details panel. Once we have an item selected, uh, like any of the actors, either a light or camera or anything, once we have it selected, we will be able to see in the detail panel all the different information and the different uh, elements that we can interact with and the ones that we can change. So for example, if we select a static mesh, we will have the location, rotation scale, as well the mesh parameters, the materials, or if we have multiple material slots, we will see them as well over here and all the other settings that uh, we can do. As well, if we have, for example, a light in the scene, then we will be able to interact with it and change the intensity and different settings. Unreal has a couple of different modes that uh, we can interact in a different way, the elements that are inside the viewport. At the moment here from this drop down is how we can change the modes. And at the moment we are into select mode, which means that we can select actors, delete them, move them around the scene, pretty much do majority of the interactions that we're gonna need for our projects. But also if we would like to create a landscape or play more with foliage, or even mesh painting, modeling, or any of the other elements. These are the different modes, which will a little bit change the interface, like add a few extra tabs here and there, so that we can interact better with those features. But select mode, as I mentioned, this is the default one that we are going to use majority of the time. 
If we have any of the tabs or the windows missing, we can always come to the window and after that, from here, toggle it on or off. Also another important element from our interface is the add button. So here, this was before a separate panel where we had a lot of the basic stuff which we can drag and drop like lights or geometry or even some of the volumes, for example, like a post-processing volume and all these kind of things. Now, inside Unreal 5, this is a little bit changed. So instead of a whole panel, we have this drop down menu and then everything is split into different sections. So if you would like to add some light or camera or uh, basic shape, we can come to this section and after that go to the correct tab and select the element that we would like to add. We are going to look a little bit into that once we are starting to add some lights and as well some volumes for post-processing. Another element which is better integrated inside Unreal 5 is the Quixel Bridge. Quixel Bridge is a tool which helps us get everything from the Megascan library quickly inside Unreal. Once we have uh, the Quixel Bridge activated, we can just uh, go into some of the collections, download an asset that we would like to use into our scene, and there is an automatic download and add button into the engine. This will create a folder inside our content browser that we are going to look into a second where exactly the content browser is. And this folder is going to contain all the mega scans. Usually the mega scans are coming structured in a folder. So you have all the meshes, textures, materials, and pretty much everything that you need for the setup of that particular asset inside the same folder. So if you download a rock, uh, you will have the mesh, textures, and material for that rock. Now let's have a look into the content browser. The content browser is something which is by default hidden and can be accessed from the bottom over here. So we can either click the content browser and it will pop up or as well we can use control plus space to open it up. If you would like to dock this and have it permanently opened, we can always put the dock to layout and then we'll have it permanently somewhere docked on our interface. That's also a good thing about Unreal that uh, all the panels is something that uh, we can grab them and dock them whatever we want. Or for example, if we are working on two screens, we can move some of the elements onto the other screen and then we have a bigger, better space inside the viewport to work. So now let's uh, start adding our content into our content browser and then building our scene little by little. So I'm going to open the content browser, right click, and I'm going to create a new folder, which I'm going to name mesh. And inside this folder, we are going to import all the meshes that we just exported. There are two ways that you can import things. Either you can drag and drop them or right click and go to the import option on the very top. I'm just going to drag and drop one of the meshes to show you what kind of settings we have. And then you can always grab all of them and just drag everything in the scene and import them into the settings that you set up the first one. This is of course, if you would like all of your meshes to have the same setup and settings. So I'm dragging one of the elements and what we get is this uh, FBX import options, this pop-up that uh, every time when we are importing meshes, uh, it changes a little bit in terms of uh, settings because uh, those meshes can be static ones. The ones that we exported are static meshes. They are not animated in any way. But if your meshes have bones, you will have a little bit of a different import settings because this will be skeletal meshes, not static ones. One thing to have in mind is that Nanite, the system that we are going to use, which is an automated optimization system inside Unreal, it's something that is not currently active for dynamic meshes like characters or any other animated elements in your scene. So this is something that you need to have in mind. For example, if you're uh, working on a big scene where you would like to animate the doors opening or for example, curtains that are being blown by the wind or anything like this, you need to have in mind that those assets cannot have uh, import settings and cannot be in the scene as nanites. They'll need to be imported as a regular static meshes, which it's not a bad thing, but uh, just you need to have it in mind because you won't be able to use them inside the Nanite system, which is uh, automatically optimizing and uh, improving the performance for Unreal 5. And this is a big thing, especially if your assets are very heavy because Nanite allows us to import uh, assets that have millions of triangles and still work with them very well and not have any issues in terms of rendering and how they handle into the scene. So let's get back to the import uh, settings. 
all of our assets that we are going to import today, they are all going to be a nanite. So uh, you can see that uh, here on the very top we have built nanite. I'm just going to click the checker mark on that one since we would like to do this. And then the second thing that we would like to do is here you can see that there is a section which is uh, materials and we don't want Unreal to create by default materials for us. We are going to create in a bit a master material which is going to be shared throughout all of the assets that we have and we are going to look into more deep settings why exactly we're going to use that and how it uh, impacts our performance for the scene and as well the end result. So here I'm going to select do not create material and as well we don't want to import any textures we are going to again import them into a separate folder this is something which you can use but i just like to have the structure on the side where i have in one folder the meshes the textures and the materials this way especially for bigger projects makes it a lot easier to find and uh, keep everything organized one more thing which uh, before we click import is to have in mind how exactly you exported your assets if your asset everything was attached and it's one whole element then uh, everything will be imported uh, together but as well you might have selected a couple of different elements that were not attached into a single asset in your 3d software in that case if we just click import uh, this will bring everything into separate pieces. So, for example, if we have a wooden floor and each of the planks on that wooden floor was a separate one, it will be imported as individual plank. And this is something that uh, you need to either uh, deal with it before you export your assets, like attach everything that you want, or as well, if you didn't do it, we can always go into our advanced options and click combine meshes. This will ensure that everything that we are importing now is going to be attached and combined into a single mesh. I'm going to click import all and that's it. We have our uh, first asset which has been imported. Now before getting all the other assets in the editor, I would like to show you why having our content browser, the possibility to pop up everywhere is a cool feature. So if we open this asset and let's say here we have three slot materials that we need to find. And in the normal case scenario in Unreal 4 or some of the older versions, we would need to either have a second screen or put those on the side and then drag and drop them from the content browser. While in Unreal 5, what we can do is when we are inside this menu, we can either click on the content browser or control plus space, and then it will open the content browser from where we can drag our materials onto the correct slots. Now I'll just import everything and start setting up the whole scene. All right, we have uh, all the things uh, imported. So I'm just going to drag and drop the base stuff that uh, I know that uh, I exported in the center. So this will be my walls and floor as well as the ones for the tiles and just I can select multiple assets and then drag them into the scene. I'm going to put all the coordinates of those assets to be on zero because we would like to build the whole scene in the center. So as you can see, I have everything selected and here on location, I'm just going to put everything on zero, zero, zero. This will ensure that uh, all the assets and everything is in the center of the scene. And later on, if we would be making some other changes and we just import the assets into the center and we will get everything into the correct places. Another thing that I'll do is uh, just going to delete this mesh uh, over here. And generally what uh, you can do is uh, keep some of those meshes and drop them downwards. This way you are going to get some of the bounces of the lights actually like this. If you would like to uh, imitate a little bit of the ground surface outside the apartment or outside the building, especially for lower floors. This is uh, something which I would recommend doing because you will just get a little bit of extra bounces of light and more realistic result. But in our case, uh, this is something which is uh, not on a very low floor, so we wouldn't need any of that. And just so that it's a little bit easier for us, I'm going to move the whole lighting system outside of our bath so we can still have the whole space in here easy to see what's going on and everything which is for the lights is going to be on the outside now i'm just going to get the rest of the elements onto their correct positions and in the next video we are going to start setting up our materials 
import our textures and get all of those onto the assets that we have at the moment.